Let's begin with the review of the normal architecture of the lung. The acinus is the basic unit of air exchange in the lung and is comprised of the terminal bronchiole and uh, that feeds into the respiratory bronchiole. The merging of those is shown here in this image. The respiratory bronchiole then feeds into the alveolar duct, which extends uh, diagonally across this image here and continues, uh, continues into this space as well. Um, and from the alveolar duct, we have a branching off of the alveolar sacs. The lobule of the lung is comprised of three to five of these acinar structures uh, and in aggregate, which are together incompletely surrounded by connective tissue septa. So the lobule of the lung can be seen here at this scanning image uh, of, uh, of a relatively normal appearing uh, section of lung. Looking at higher power, the lobule it can actually be defined here by this red line. Again, it is defined by the presence of this incomplete um, fibrous septation that, be, that begins from the, um, the pleural surface and continues inward. You can also appreciate the, uh, the uh, um, several acinar structures within this lobule, one of which is defined here in this circle uh, by this paired um, membranous airway and arterial. Another acinar structure could be defined here and potentially another one here. In patients with emphysema, more striking degree of variation may be seen in the uh, airspace size. And as can be seen here, there are areas of the lung that have relatively small and preserved alveolar uh, uh, structures and other areas where the alveolar structures are markedly enlarged um, and they uh, have a quite an irregular shape. You can also appreciate some degree of alveolar septal fibrosis, which is quite typical in this scenario. I would also point out that um, in this particular um, case, at higher power view, you can appreciate that the distribution of this emphysematous changes appear to be relatively central lobular. Here is uh, a um, terminal airway, here's the respiratory bronchiole, here's a uh, paired ar artery, and this is likely uh, where the respiratory bronchiole is then feeding out into the center of this lobule, and you can see the striking degree of um, um, alveolar septal destruction and emphysematous change in this region. Overall, emphysema is really best evaluated either on radiology or on gross examination of a pneumonectomy specimen. It's defined based on the destruction of the alveolar septal structures and pulmonary function tests typically show significant degrees of obstruction. Biologically, emphysema is related to an imbalance in the elastases and anti-elastases within the lungs. And there are essentially two hits in smokers which, trigger to, which, which contribute to this imbalance. Firstly, cigarette smoke triggers an inflammatory response that may be concentrated in particular around the respiratory bronchiole. This leads to recruitment of neutrophils and macrophages into the environment, which can lead to increased levels of elastases in that local environment. Normally, alpha-1 antitrypsin, which is produced in the liver and is present in the circulation and which can inhibit the effects of these uh, elastases from the immune cells, is actually inhibited by tobacco smoke, fairly specifically. This ultimately leads to a significant imbalance of this elastase activity uh, versus the inhibitory elastase activity led by alpha-1 antitryptase. This explains why smokers tend to have a predominance of central lobular emphysema because of the location of the inflammation um, and the um, enrichment of elastases in these central lobular distributions. The challenge for pathologists in regards to emphysema is that it's often difficult to quantify on microscopic examination, in part because we receive relatively limited sampling of the lung on uh, individual biopsy specimens. Um, and in addition, 
em the emphysematous airspaces may often appear collapsed and difficult to um, uh, characterize on microscopy.